Yeah? yeah? Right? Yes. Yeah. Deal? Doing. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. There's a module for that? There, of course there is. Okay, so there's a bit of delay on this line, and Chris and I have been trying to figure it out. In any case, welcome to a special instant publish edition of the Acquia podcast. Podcast. Chris Vanderwater and I just got back from DrupalCon Austin. I'm still definitely fighting with jet lag, which has hit me a lot harder than it usually does. How was your trip home, Chris? Uh, I actually haven't made it home yet. Um, I'm still in Dallas. I uh, this my my 10 year anniversary fell very very close to uh, DrupalCon this year. So my wife and kids came with me to DrupalCon, and we took a little mini vacation to San Antonio afterwards. So I'm just now making my way home. A DrupalCon is such a lovely anniversary present for your wife. Um, it's very <laughs> so thoughtful of you. Yeah, I thought so. I thought so. I, I think she was really, really um, enthused with it. Especially when you brought her in-laws, you, when you brought your folks with, with you as well, right? True, I did, yeah. Chris Vanderwater is such a romantic. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, Chris... Uh, you were on the podcast, um, uh, let's see, we recorded that sometime last autumn, and you talked about Drupal 8, and we got a bunch of your origin story in Drupal, but let's go over a couple of sort of key details of that again. I seem to recall that you started in Drupal as a front-ender, and wherever it was that you were working, you chose Drupal, and that you're one of the few people I've ever heard say this, but you chose Drupal 4 because it was incredibly themable. How, how much did I remember right? Yeah, yeah, that's true. Uh, the place I was working was actually my parents' company at the time. Um, but yeah, we, we chose Drupal at the time because we could do so very much on the theme layer. Uh, so that, that is absolutely true. Um, Morton DK has promised to come on um, my virtual Drupal camp in the next couple of weeks, and he's going to be talking about Twig and getting that into Drupal 8, and I am going to confront him with the brutal truth that Drupal has always been incredibly themable, and he can just stop complaining and, you know, work with all those divs. <laughs> and, and, and you're just going to blame it on me, aren't you? <laughs> right, of course. Morton, Chris says <laughs> you need to calm down. No, anyway... <laughs> Joking aside, so how long have you been doing? Oh wow! Uh, so since late in the Drupal four six cycle, so I think that's like around eight years now. Um, I didn't actually join Drupal.org for about a year after I started working with Drupal. Uh, so like, you can go look at my profile and just add about a year to it. You started at your family's business doing Drupal. Can you talk about the impact that open source software had on on your ability to, to build a successful business? Sure. Um, so I think what's what's really interesting about that whole situation is that my, my folks run a hosting facility in addition to running a, a Drupal dev shop. In fact, the, the hosting facility predates their work with Drupal quite significantly. Um, so, of course, traditional hosting these days is heavily run on open source, you know, using LAMP stacks and uh, what have you. Uh, so, you know, I would say in that regard, it's kind of instrumental. In terms of uh, the CMS, uh, we, we actually bounced around to a number of different CMSs for a while. Uh, so I think, uh, gosh, there was Post Nuke and PHP Nuke, and uh, we had kind of inherited an ASP-based uh, proprietary system that we actively wanted to move, you know, customers that we had inherited along with that off of and over to something, but we had not really found something that we were comfortable with yet until we until we started using Drupal. Uh, so Drupal was really kind of the the key component in getting my my parents' uh, CMS 
portion of the business to really uh, take off. And so, uh, yeah, I, I'd say it's a, a pretty big deal. Um, my father will probably shoot me if I don't at least say his company's name. Uh, so it's the Works Company. Uh, they've been in Drupal for quite a while now. Um, and yeah, they, they do a lot of really great uh, kind of um, uh, like small, medium-sized business focal, focused Drupal work. Wait, okay, shameless pitch for Kurt and Sue Vanderwater and the Works Company. The W O R X is that right? Yeah, yeah. Their their website's uh, worksco.com. W O R X C O dot com. You were or are actually very heavily involved in the Drupal eight development cycle. Um, what are you most in Drupal eight? Well, I think. Um, you know, in, in terms of features that have already landed there, uh, I'm really excited about contextual plugins, which has seen a really big, like, uptick in progress in just the last probably two to three weeks here. Um, and there are a couple of patches that are sitting RTBC in the queue uh, that as soon as they're committed, we're going we're gonna to have some really, really great stuff coming down the line. Um, I'll, I'll tell you, overall, the thing I'm most excited about with Drupal 8 is actually that um, so many people uh, seem to be coming out of the woodwork right now and be wanting to work towards uh, getting displays and blocks and all of this kind of foundational components to panels actually in Drupal 8, uh, which, you know, has been, um, has been kind of a struggle uh, over the course of the last couple years for me, and I've had a a hard time figuring out how to um, how to manufacture the excitement that just seems to have spontaneously combusted here leading up to DrupalCon Austin. Uh, so, you know, I'm really, really excited about what we're doing and where we're going. And I think uh, there's, you know, we're not going to get as far as I wanted to, but I think a lot of the foundational work that I was really hoping we would get done uh, looks more and more likely every day to actually land for Drupal 8. So. You know, that's kind of uh, two edges of the uh, of the whole layout sword that I would like to see see happen. So I have to say that the release site at, at this point before Drupal 7's release, it was really, really heavy going, and people were really had run out of energy. Run, we had run out of you know perceived really kind of a dark moment in. The community and now with Drupal 8, Drupal 8's been such a radical reworking and so much hard work and so much has gone into it and I would expect us to be at that same low energy sort of moment of despair almost and completely honest in the last six or eight months I have been to some of the most incredible Drupal community events I've ever been to. I've never felt so much excitement and so much energy and and really the amount of hard work that people continue to manage um, and to stay excited so we had I had a huge technical difficulty here in my office I am still talking with you Chris Vanderwater and we were talking about the Drupal 8 development cycle and how much energy there is in the community um, in the last six to eight months and so why don't you kick off with what you were saying about uh, about that and and how things looked eight months ago compared to now. Sure. So I was just saying that um, you know, for my part, it, at least to me, it, it felt during that time period that things were kind of getting back to one of those lows where everybody was burned out and everybody had really had enough of the development cycle and so many things had changed with so many people, you know, being kind of upset about uh, various changes that uh, you know. I, I really felt like we were at a low point six to eight months ago, um, and I don't I don't exactly know what happened. I think maybe we just pushed on through it and found our second wind, or um, or you know there's something fundamental about the changes that are coming that it it brought a lot more people on board. Um, that you know there's still development going on and there's a lot of excitement around that. And I think DrupalCon Austin was no exception in this regard, um, and I, I really think that that's 
that's been uh, very noticeable, and especially from my perspective, because so many people have come to me and said, hey, you know, Scotch, what's happening with it? Is it going to happen? And, uh, you know, for my part, the answer was, was sort of no up until pretty recently, and now people have just come out of the woodwork and are really excited to try and get some of these foundational components done for it. And, you know, I'm not the only person seeing this. This is happening in other aspects of Drupal 8 development as well. Remind like, me. Uh, the Scotch acronym is and what it stands for. Oh, um, I think the Palantiri uh, backronymed that to, gosh, I can't even remember. That was like Denver. Uh, it, mostly it was just a play on, on whiskey. Um, but it was all of this. Yeah, yeah. So what it, what it actually was was... Yeah. Um, Scotch was an attempt to take more of the um, page layout components of um, panels and, and that sort of response layer uh, from like a routing perspective and formalize it more into something that uh, Drupal Contrib could utilize. So while ultimately we would have loved for something like panels to land in core, that simply wasn't doable uh, so, you know, the discussion was how do we how do we put together like the foundational components so that panels and display suite and even context module could all work from the same uh, from the same basic starting point and hopefully play nice together. Uh, so that was kind of one of the big goals of doing that that sort of a thing. Let's talk about DrupalCon Austin and uh, so you felt the same energy there that uh, in, in the contribution sprints, in the sessions that, that we've both been feeling in the last few months. Would, it, would, would you say that's true? Yeah, I'd say that's absolutely true. In fact, to a certain degree, I feel like uh, DrupalCon Austin might have kind of been like a peak for that. Like there were so many people in the right place at the right time talking about the same topics that I really felt like uh, some really serious headway was made in some places where... Uh, we've been kind of deadlocked for a while, so that that was really really good stuff. What is your week overall? Give me your top three highlights for DrupalCon Austin. Um, I'd say the number one highlight for me was probably um, the headless Drupal boff. Uh, we had a, a boff about what it looks like to, um, from a Drupal perspective. Uh, work in solutions more like Angular JS for your front end, and how to get Drupal really creating that sort of stuff, and hopefully how to get Drupal 8 better supporting that kind of a workflow. Um, uh, so that was that was a really uh, big deal. I think uh, one of the other highlights for me was actually we ended up having a uh, a boff with um, the Acre folks and the Pantheon folks about um, about uh, multi-site, and that was a really big deal. Um, so the uh, the community really turned out for that, and that ended up being uh, broadcast across Hangouts as well. And I know uh, there were people, uh, at least in Boston, uh, at the Acquia offices who were watching that live as it happened, and there were, it was standing room only in that box space, and there were people out in the, out, not even in the hallway, uh, so, you know, uh, it was, it was a pretty big deal and, and like I said, the turnout was just huge. And, uh, then, you know, gosh, top three, those were really my top two and they, they okay. occupied an awful lot of my brain space. So you have the dark side and you work in a marketing department. Why don't you tell us about your new job? Sure. So um, I am Acquia's new developer evangelist, and uh, this is this is kind of a perfect job for me because I really love talking about Drupal, and that's a big part of the job. Uh, so you know what that means is essentially um, like my job is to be available to uh, marketing for when they the, when they want to send messages to developers. Like I kind of own that to a certain degree. And so I'm there to help them say, well, you know, developers developers want to hear about X, Y, and Z. They don't they don't care about these other things, or you know, those 
those sorts of, of topics are things that we cover a lot. A huge portion of what I do is just really uh, being available uh, to, to talk about uh, developers and to talk to developers. Uh, so it, it's kind of a, a dual, way, dual communication channel sort of thing. My job is to, to help other people communicate developers and then to communicate to developers myself. And uh, really a big portion of that is to represent um, like the community's interests in Acquia, specifically in marketing. Um, so that, you know, I, I've got my, I, I like to think at least that I've got my finger on what the community at large is kind of talking about and doing and, and feeling on a lot of topics. Um, I certainly can't know everything everywhere, but you know, on the whole, I think I have a pretty, a pretty good feel for where the community's at most of the time. And you know, my job is to kind of represent that to Acquia internally. Um, I'm certainly not alone in that job. We have so many other developers who are capable of doing that, but a lot of them are really doing the development, the day-to-day -day development work. Um, and so um, my, my job is like kind of part evangelist and part advocate uh, with you know a lot of thought leadership around blogging and talking about you know the future of Drupal, the future of Acquia products, uh, the present of Acquia products, and just kind of trying to uh, let people know what's there. You know, Acquia has a plethora of products um, and services that are available that, um, you know, I think maybe the community has missed some of the details of those and I wanna really come in and help highlight, uh, highlight some of what can be done. You know, my first big push in that regard has been around Acquia's Cloud API and I got a great big post on, on that that talks about what some of our clients and partners have done with Cloud API and points people towards documentation so that they could write their own implementations of those things. Um, so, you know, I mean, that level of stuff is kind of where I'm heading and what I'm trying to do uh, for Acquia today uh, and, yeah, and into the future. You've done a lot of development for Drupal 8 and you've been really, really involved in the technical side of this development cycle. Um, what sort of provisions do you have in your new job for continuing that work, or is it something that you've desperately wanted to give up all this time? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, no, I think uh, I think as a developer, uh, it, you know, I, I, I don't want to speak for all developers too much by saying this, but to a certain degree, I think most developers kind of have a notion that they'd prefer not to have customers. Um, and, and I mean that in the nicest possible sense. Uh, you know, you, you hear it all the time. Oh, yeah, the 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 job's great. The worst thing is is the customers or whatever. And that's a that's a really sad sad state of affairs. But um, I, I think as as a developer, you know, we're many of us look for what what that next like evolutionary step in in our job is. And for me, you know, that meant uh, my customer became the Drupal community. And I said this in my blog post talking about, uh, about my new position, uh, but it just really felt like, um, you know, moving to this position was, was really about becoming a developer for the community, uh, and, and being able to, uh, illustrate things that I was seeing in, in blog posts, um, helping to continue contributing code. Uh, so, no, I haven't given up on, on doing Drupal 8 work. Uh, what I have done is I've, I'm not really responsible for anything that would be client facing. Uh, so, you know, as part of my blogging, I will be blogging about Drupal 8 and 8.1 and 8.2 and, and 9 when that happens. And so, you know, as those things come to be, uh, uh, I will be working on uh, probably uh, quite a bit of example code. Uh, and, you know, if I run into bugs in, in whatever version of Drupal I happen to be working against at the time when I'm writing those blog posts, I'll be filing issues and writing patches and all the same things that you expect uh, a core developer to do. Um, so, so, yeah, that, that has not changed. Um, it's just that the motive behind it now is really purely in terms of helping other developers uh, get where I, where we all want to go um, and helping Drupal 8 get where it wants to go or whatever version of Drupal we happen to be working on at the time. So that's great. So, so we're going to keep on seeing you 
in the issue queues and, and, and the takeaway is that part of your job is that you just have a, a mandate now to make Drupal better and communicate about that. Is that a fair uh, way to describe it? I think that that's a pretty fair way to describe it, yeah. Excellent. Chris, I think that between the technical hassles and everything else, um, we've probably talked long enough at this point. Cool. Chris, thanks a lot. Talk to you soon. Take care. Thanks, Jim.